Welcome back to part two of our episode and our interview with the great Amber Kay and Azriel Aaron Kay. <laughs> We're gathered here to share duck humor from around the world, and uh, I know you've all been eagerly anticipating this event for many months now. But since there are only six duck jokes that do not actually involve the word quack, it's going to be a shorter meeting than we anticipated. So uh, we're going to run through those jokes very quickly, and then uh, we'll open the floor for anyone who has um, created or intends to create additional duck jokes. Once again, observing the restriction that no duck joke may include the word quack. That's far too easy for people of your caliber. I think we will we'll now recognize the delegate from Affleck. <laughs> quack, quack. <laughs> Got any grapes? Well said, well said. <laughs> Hello, this is Reverend Don Lewis, and we're here at Pantheacon with Amber Kay and Azriel Aaron Kay. It's nice to be here. Thank you. And, um, well, we were just reciting Jabberwocky. We were indeed. Um, however, that's probably not what our viewers want to hear about. How oh, odd. Um, <laughs> That would be sad. Um, let me uh, let me ask you first how you're enjoying Pantheacon. Oh, it's uh, it's splendid as always. It's uh, such a rich and huge pagan environment that everyone can find something that's right for them. It's and a lot of fun, especially watching the costumes go by. The, the and you've come here for for some time, I believe. Yes, uh, years and years. years. Yes, about six years. We are from New Mexico at uh, Ardentine and. Uh, this is one of our annual pilgrimages that we always include. Um, you mentioned Ardentane. I did. And can we discuss that for a moment? We can. Ar Ardentane is a uh, pagan seminary and uh, learning center headquartered in northern New Mexico. And we have uh, programs in, certificate programs in six different areas, uh, healing arts, uh, magic and witchcraft, shamanic studies, pagan leadership, uh, pagan spirituality, and sacred living. And uh, these are adult programs for people who want to enrich their uh, experience and their spirituality on any of the pagan paths. Well, of all the different people who do schools, you certainly are among the most qualified because you've been writing on these subjects. Well, the first time I read something by you, I had a pet dinosaur. So, uh, <laughs> the Ice Age has come and gone in the meantime. Yes, I remember. But of, of, of all the people who have something to say, you have a lot to say. And I want to once again take a moment and thank you for giving the world moose mass. Oh, of course. Um, <laughs> anyone out there who celebrates moose mass? That would be you. You, you owe a thank you to this woman. <laughs> And of course, uh, to the spirit of the horned god is represented and uh, embodied in Bullwinkle, Bullwinkle the Moose. The moose. Yeah. moose Mass is the ninth Sabbath. It's a very holy day. And if you haven't read about Moose Mass, it's probably because the Moose Mass handbook is out of print. But you should learn. You should learn. And you were saying that you have some plans to bring that back one day, the pagan spoof. Uh, yeah. It's um, it's one of those uh, classic pieces of tra um, literature that's <laughs> been long out of print, and uh, I even have some materials which will be part of uh, Pagan Spoof, The Second Coming, as we reverently call it. And we're thinking of publishing uh, the first Pagan Spoof, the second Pagan Spoof, and the Moose Mess Handbook as a set. Uh, or possibly all in one volume, because they are very small. Or I may inscribe them on golden tablets and put them in a cave somewhere to be discovered eons hence, but we haven't decided. Well, that is sometimes the most effective uh, technique, but terribly expensive. It worked for the Mormons. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? Hmm. Okay, let me get my thoughts back together now. Okay. Um, I, I was going to remark that some of, some of the most interesting works in our library are by you. Hmm. And slim little volumes from back in the day. Hmm. Um, but you've written many, many books, and um, I was wondering if you would, uh, if you would both care to speak to the the publishing move. Ah, oh, okay. That's spelled O U R V E. No, V R E. Um, the worry, spelling was determined spelled. by someone who was determined that no one should ever spell the word correctly. Again, that's appropriate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we we write books together actually, and. Um, Yes. The first book I wrote, we didn't write together because we didn't know each other. 
and that was true magic, which I have been reliably informed is a classic in the field and that everyone should own. It's a little green book, or it was a little green book. <laughs> and now we have the 15th anniversary edition, and believe it or not, in 15 years I actually learned something, so the book is, <laughs> is now thicker, it's got six more chapters and a hundred more exercises, and it's um, not as little a green book anymore, but we have that book. And then we have Coven Craft, and we have others that we've written together. You yes, to speak to um, that. we've written Candlemas, and which is a celebration oh, yes. of the holiday of Imbolc, and that was our first collaboration, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then we wrote The Heart of Tarot, which is, despite what the publisher put on the cover, it is not an intuitive at approach to tarot. It's a client-centered oh. approach to tarot reading. And then we, uh, Amber wrote Covencraft by herself, and I did. Oh my God, that's right! Some, you wrote that, didn't you? Yes, oh. and I did, <laughs> and I did some of the editing for that. Uh, and then uh, we have most recently written Ritual Craft, which mm -hmm. was this year's winner of, or well, last year's winner of, the Book of the Year award given out by the Coalition of Visionary Resources. Very yes. good felt really good. It was They give out awards in eight different categories and we won Best Wiccan Pagan Book and then of those eight categories they choose the best and that's the book of the year so we have Ritual Craft as the winner for the overall book of the year. Now, we know that any book that comes out with your names on it is going to be a good one. Oh thank you. <laughs> thank um, you. And probably a classic because most of them have been. We like to think so. Um, and Covencraft which was mentioned briefly, I think probably everybody has a copy of. <laughs> um, and slavishly copies and plagiarizes and <laughs> uses so. extensive, extensive. We would hope so. Yes. Not the plagiarism part, but the well, use, the extensive use part, yes. Uh, nonetheless, I think there are many little covens that just photocopy and say, this is what you do. Mm -hmm. um, that works. That's all right. But, uh, That's okay. Cool. Oh. Don't tell it. Don't tell our publisher we said that. That's not cool. It's copyrighted yeah. material. Don't repeat that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway. But um, many, many temples do look for it for a guide plan. Yes. And I think it's been very helpful to many, many people. Oh, thank you. I hope so. Uh, that was the intent: is to uh, you know at least double or triple the number of covens in America. And uh, I, I think it's at least done that. Hope so. And help them to better running. Uh, mm -hmm. of their organizations because mm -hmm. as, as you know that's um, if, if one doesn't have some instruction from people who have made the mistakes mm -hmm. one makes the mistakes that's right <laughs> and usually you do it anyway but at least you have some warning and we've intentionally and, made a lot of mistakes simply so that we could write books based on the, the <laughs> yeah the, mm -hmm, okay mm -hmm. so we're still making mistakes for that particular purpose otherwise we would very wise of you. Yes. Otherwise, Thank we you. would not make the mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, the reading public thanks you for your sacrifice. Thank you. Thank you, reading public. <laughs> buy more books. Books are good. Um, if someone does want to buy your books, where would they go? Any bookstore can order them. And uh, they're also available through our publisher, Llewellyn Publications. Uh, that's 1-800-THE-MOON. Um, if you want to call them. Such a good publicist. Absolutely. Wow. And uh, any New Age or metaphysical bookstore may have them in stock. If they don't, they should. And any bookstore in the country can order the books from Llewellyn. Very good. And if you want to see Pagan Spoof republished, you would send your letters to... Um, Ardentane, Post Office Box 307, Hamas Springs... Now that does, doesn't sound like it, but it's spelled with a J. It's, it looks like Jemez Springs. Hamas Springs, New Mexico, 87025. Call now and you will get a free, sorry, <laughs> set of weird. ginseng, no, ginsu, ginsu, ginsu knives. Ginsu knives. Yes, and a Popeil pocket fisherman. Alrighty then. <laughs> <laughs> and you're vending Not this weekend as well. Yes, we are. Now we're actually, uh, <coughs> We're actually providing a fount of wisdom and knowledge. We're, uh, it's, it's more like the paradigm where you climb the mountain and find a girl, except ours is just a table. It's not a, it's just a table. It looks like a vendor table, but it's actually a source of great wisdom and sacredness. I see. 
Speaking of wisdom and sacredness, before, before we started the camera, we were having a wonderful conversation on the interaction between foreign policy and baskets. We were, yes. Um, so perhaps I could, I could get you to um, give you? us your opinion of the role of baskets in foreign policy. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to do that. That was very good. No, and that's uh, what editing's for. Yes. Yes. And I was a political science major, and sometimes it runs away with me. But um, um, despite what we said, um, it's true. Um, well, let me <laughs> let me ask you. Yes, please. Um, we're in an election year, and we are in some ways in a period in our culture where we might say newer forces and older forces are contending with each other to the frustration of our own people on occasion. Mm -hmm. um, what do you see as being what our community most needs to do to move into the future? One of the things that I think is most important is that everybody who can vote, vote. Um, we have a little button that says just doing our, um, I'm pagan and I vote, and we encourage anybody to wear those buttons and to actually act on it and vote in the coming elections. Because if you don't vote, then you have no reason to gripe when things don't turn out right later. Uh, let if me you go do vote, you've done your best. Let me take that a little further. It's been suggested by some that it's time for the second American Revolution. And uh, I think we may be approaching that point. We live in a culture which is controlled by the military-industrial complex that uh, President Eisenhower warned us about. And he was an intelligent man. He knew what he was talking about, and uh, he was also a prophet. And at this point, uh, most of the resources in our society are controlled, in fact, by uh, corporate interests that um, do not have the welfare of the American people, much less the rest of the world, as high priorities. They are, in fact, interested in the bottom line and in power. And voting is good. Activism beyond voting is even better. And to those who say that uh, revolution may be called for, uh, I'm not going to disagree with that. Because every society finds itself contending with those who would attempt to achieve ultimate power, whether it be uh, the Inquisition, or whether it be an aristocracy, or a nobility, or whether, whether it be uh, the corporate interests. And we are replaying that scenario again in this day and age. As Ezreal says, if you stand back and do nothing, then you have no cause to complain when you find that your life, your culture, your society, and your planet is completely under the control of others. I would say um, it's, it's time to act. And I myself am not a revolutionary hero. All I can do is uh, say what I see, and what I see is um, very, very serious indeed. To put it another way, we're doomed. <laughs> no, we're not doomed. No, we're not doomed. We no, we're, not we're not doomed. Good. But, um, but I do think we are in a very serious time, mm -hmm. and yeah. I appreciate your sharing your sentiments. Now, um, where will you next be appearing? Now that you've said that, and people may, might or might not want to come see you with or without sharp options. Um, you're implying that we're disappearing. Oh, no. Oh, okay, no. good, because, you know, where are we going, next going to appear? I feel like a UFO oh. or something. <laughs> yes. um, well, I mean, it is a high-level skill that you might, in fact, possess, but... No, I, 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 meant, I meant what... Um, we're not talking apparition here. No. Okay. No, if people wanted to come see you... Ah. Where, what, what, what future events are you planning to...? They should actually come to Ardentine in New Mexico and visit our campus, which is extraordinary, or the land around oh, it is extraordinary. Wonderful. Uh, they should do that and um, take in one of our uh, weekend intensives while they're there. Uh, we bop around the country from place to place, and this year we're going to be visiting, I think, I hope, Oregon and Philadelphia and Iowa and a few other places. But uh, if you want to catch the act in person, then uh, coming to New Mexico is best. Besides, we have really good food if you like chilies. We have chilies of all kinds, and it's really tasty. And marvelous climate, and um, 
you don't want to move there because then it would get crowded, but you want to come visit. <laughs> uh, Azrael, Amber, thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. And I really appreciate it. And we appreciate your work in the Pagan community yes. as well. Thank you. Yes. What is it you do? <laughs> <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed this week's episode and that you'll join us again next week for another episode of Living the Wiccan Life. Until then, may you blessed be.